Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Good day and welcome back to the Forty Orty Podcast with your host as always, Mr. Thomas Henley. Today it's it's been very windy in the UK, just your local weather forecast <laughs> update. And um I'm feeling good today. Today we've got a bit of a shorter episode than usual. Um we're going to be chatting to Dan from the Aspie World all about autism and parenting. Not just parenting an autistic child, but being an autistic parent as well. Uh which is something that I think over the course of my life I've been kind of thinking about the possibility of having a having a prodig a prod progeny. Prodigy. <laughs> progeny. <laughs> Prodigy <laughs> progeny. Um having a having a kid. Um but you know sometimes with all the, the issues that come with autism like executive functioning, maybe some of the mental health stuff. I'm a bit I'm a bit on the tentative side around it. I'm gonna ask Dan a little bit about his experience, but before we do that. I just want to introduce him to anybody who don't know him. He is one of uh, the b- biggest, if not the biggest, autism YouTuber out there. He's a coach, and um, we've met up. We've met up. I think once at one of the autism shows, didn't we? Yeah, I think I feel like I met you twice though. But maybe it was the one. Yeah. Maybe it was the one time when I just kind of like I don't know. But we definitely, yeah, we definitely met in Manchester uh, a couple of months yeah. ago. Oh, well, that was nice, man. It's uh, yeah, it was good. It's always good to put like see people in real life after seeing them on the screen for so long <laughs> it really is so yeah i mean what one thing that i want to ask you before we got into it is mm-hmm. you know because because you've 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 done so well on youtube i mean how long have you been running your channel and what kind of thing like encouraged you or motivated you to start it in the first place I mean, they're, they're good questions. So, you know, I've been running the Aspie World YouTube channel now since 2013, but I have been going full ham on it since 2017, maybe 2016. Um, because, like, you know, I, I uploaded my first video in 2013, but I didn't do anything until, like, you know, 2016, probably, yeah, you yeah. know, like, where I was like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And then, like, um, I was, I finished university in 2017, and I was like, that's it, you know, I'm just going to go full ham on YouTube. So yeah, since then I've been kind of doing it. Um, so it does take a while, you know. It takes, but you, you got to know what you're doing. There's no, um, there's no luck involved with YouTube. It's it's definitely a, um, it's definitely a strategy. Um, but in terms of uh, what made me do it, was uh, I was diagnosed in 2013 uh, with uh, Asperger's syndrome, as it was back then, uh, and ADHD and some other bits and pieces. And then I was like, oh man, and I knew nothing about autism or Asperger's or anything like that. So I was like, oh geez. So I went online and. I'm obviously dyslexic as well. So, you know, reading blogs and things wasn't really my <laughs> yeah. forte. So I was like, dang it, I'm going to go on YouTube. So I went on YouTube, typed in like Asperger's syndrome, and I couldn't really find anything. Um, most of the stuff I saw was just like <laughs> these dudes that were really depressing, like, Ugh, Asperger's syndrome, and everyone hates me. I was like, oh, geez, man. I just felt like, you know, I'd felt worse after watching the videos, and I thought, Jesus, this is yeah, just yeah. total crap. Then I thought to myself, hey, maybe I could like make videos that were like, you know, fire videos that people could watch and be like, dude, I, I'm the same, but also, my life doesn't suck it's so bad. Well, you know, it sucks sometimes, but it doesn't suck all the time. Or, hey, maybe I can talk about the cool things in my life to make it entertaining. Or maybe I can talk about the bad things in my life, make it entertaining, and help people. What about that? So I did that. And um, my first video sucked. <laughs> but, like, it, it gradually got better. You know, after you do, yeah, like, 50 yeah. videos, it's okay. Develop them so, over time. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the that's the kind of key there. But, you know, and I'm glad I did because, like, um, I was, like, the first person to do it. It was, like, nobody. There was no, like autistic kind of youtubers there was none so i was like you know sorry i'll do it and then and it was it's amazing because there's so many now i'm like whoa i love this you know i love the fact that like i inspired these people to do this stuff um well i hope anyway <laughs> and that's <laughs> the same idea like you know years apart well it's it's the same kind of thing with the um the the like social media communities like i mean the, the one that i'm most involved in is the one on instagram and um 
like when when I started off, it was hard to like find people to like yeah, message yeah. and DM and like try and get them on the podcast. Yeah. But now, yeah. now, oh my god, it's just like it's flooded with accounts and people. I'm like, oh Jesus, and they're, they're not even like little accounts. So like every day, every every odd day that I find like a um new and budding in in Instagram Brokers. influencer. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, Instagram is is actually responsible for for like uh, uh, the I think it was something like in two thousand twenty, it was responsible for like ninety percent of the millionaires that were made in America because the, it's just such a big business opportunity on Instagram. You know, the land grab is crazy big. But um, but you're absolutely right. I think like so many people are turning into Instagram now because obviously there's more opportunity with video, um, and it is a great platform. It, there's something about Instagram which is very kind of like. Um, it's very relatable to everybody. And I really like that. Mm. I do like Instagram. Mm. I actually just had a, a video go viral on Instagram. I got like half a million views oh, uh, nice. on a video um, the other day. Uh, what was that? It, it was, I did a video on um, just a, just a real dude, you know, talking about how like the flickering of light. Uh, yeah, how, yeah, yeah. Well, just a, yeah. You must've seen that one. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and I was just in the toy store, right? Like 609,000 views. So I was in the toy store and I was like, dude, I said to my, my girlfriend, I was like, can you see this light? She's like, no. And I was like, oh my God, like this light is like doing my nothing. I can't stand it. <laughs> it like, happens all the time. And she's like, I can't see it. I was like, what? So I randomly had my camera uh, open on my phone and it picked up the light. I thought, huh, I can explain this because I can show the flicker on the camera because the camera was running at 24 frames a second or 60 frames a second. Or so the frame rate was different. So it was able to pick up the, the, the flicker. So I did that. And uh, I put it on TikTok first, and then it just blew up on TikTok again, like half a million views on TikTok. And I was like, oh, so I put it on Instagram, same thing, half a million views on Instagram. I was like, holy smokes. Um, so yeah, I mean, the video did really well. Um, actually, yeah, my TikTok blew up because of that. Um, so nice. I went from like pretty much nothing on TikTok to like 22,000 followers now. So getting there. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. It was really good. Man. Cool, man. Um, so... As far as like the sort of the main topics that I wanted to cover, because we're obviously talking a little bit about parenting, um, you know, start starting off, I suppose, at the beginning. I mean, how did you prepare yourself for having a child, and did you have any like initial worries about about um, being a parent? Um, I think, like you know, I mean, nothing can prepare you for being a parent. Because like being a parent is something that like, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's individual for everybody, you know, like you, because you're not, you're not just becoming a parent, like you're becoming a parent for the first time and that child is making you a parent for the first time, you know? So it's kind of like, sure. It, it's a, it's an, it's an interesting experience, almost, <clears throat> almost spiritual experience because you, you kind of like earn like a, a hierarchy, you know, you earn like a. Uh, and a graduation from being just a, a human to being like, you know, playing the hand of God, you know, you've created mm. life and you have this thing in front of you, but then you yeah. have to like play the hand of the universe and keep it alive, you know, and do the best for it. It's, so it's it sounds of, scary to me. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, you know, it's not scary. It's kind of really cool because like, you know, we, because, because I'm like, you know, I was, uh, what was I, 30, uh, 31, 32, and I'm like, girlfriend was like 28 29 or whatever so we were like yeah let's just uh you know let's it's now it's time you know we're, we're good time in our lives to have a child and and so kind of like the only preparation we did was like um i kind of had to i mean i had this conversation you said at the beginning though like you said you know you were scared of of having offspring and then passing on uh issues to offspring right which is which is it was a huge concern of mine but then i was like yeah but you know there, there's so much like there's so much like help available right if you if you if you know how to access it and plus it's me so like you know i do this for a living i help people for a living so i was yeah, like yeah. Oh, i can help my kid you know if they have issues maybe they and then i was like look there's, there's a chance they won't have issues um but um which we'll get on to in a bit but in, in terms of um in terms of like prep uh i basically kind of like literally sat down um because there's some phys there's like so when you talk about preparation there's no mental preparation you can do but there's some physical preparation you can do you can um make sure that you've got everything you need, right? So I kind of like made a list of everything we needed and just like bought everything straight away. And so we had this like huge list of stuff we needed to buy. And like, and so that to me was like the, the prep work for it, right? But um, there was no, um, there was no, uh, uh, there's, no, there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself for, for what it is. And you know what the interesting thing about it is like when you have a kid, 
like it goes from being like um everything like how can i explain you know like you know when you have to like prepare stuff for yourself like say say like oh i gotta go to the grocery store so like yeah then you have to like mentally prepare yourself to do all this stuff and you have to do other things you take your headphones with you and stuff it's kind of like those things come secondary and then you have to prepare the kit first so you put yourself second and you know the pr- biggest problem there is that you you kind of like you'll forget about you a little bit so and then yeah. what happens and this is difficult because what happens is you know you'll go to the grocery store and, oh, sh- i forgot my headphones you know and then you can't deal with all the stuff that's going on and mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's like it's super interesting like i yeah it doesn't mean you could pay yourself but um but it was you know yeah it's good it's good i forgot the rest of the question <laughs> <laughs> no i think you answered it pretty well that um i think uh you know as as far as my my worries being a parent it's it's less about i mean the the, the thing that i'm most scared about is um their their experiences at school, like in later oh, life. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I feel like sort of the early stages, sort of going up to, you know, primary school a little bit at top. Um that, you know, I feel like I could probably do pretty well, but I I'm i I I'm always worried in the back of my head. It's like, oh my God, are they gonna have the same experiences that I've had? Yeah. Um, did- I feel the exact same thing, but I do have an answer for that. But um, I think I think as far as like difficulties that I have, I think you know the executive functioning on mental health on my end is is one of the reasons why I'm a bit tentative about it. Yeah, 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 and, and like that was like one of my you know the school thing was really hard. Like I I feel like school is so. Like my experience in school was f- terrible. <laughs> I had to stop myself swearing. It was was awful, right? And like uh, even like primary school, secondary school, school school, like the whole thing just sucked. And um, and I and I relayed this to my my partner. I said, look, I just I just can't, you know, I can't have this beautiful little thing we just made go off to school and then and then like you know he's. So when, because when he's that young, we realize like, oh, he's definitely ADHD. And we're like, look, he's going to have some issues in school. And it's like, you know, and she's like, oh, okay. So we decided to homeschool. We were like, we're going to homeschool. And we had this rule, actually. We said, look, if if our kid says like, I want to go to school, we have to allow him to try because he's his own person, you know, like he, he wants to, he has to live his life as well. And so we have to respect his choice, you know, like that's not, we don't dominate somebody's life. We just guide them in the best way we can. You know, we don't make their decisions. Um, and I know everyone's like, oh, you know, you, you have to make decisions for your kids until they're 18. Yeah, stuff like, you know, drinking and smoking and, you know, driving cars and stuff. But, but like things like, you know, oh, I, you know, this or that and stuff. Um, and so uh, my kid was like, I want to go to school. We we're like, oh, shoot. And we spent all this money buying this homeschool stuff. And we're like, oh, great. So we thought, okay. So we found this really cool school um, locally, uh, which uh, my partner's sister works at, funny enough. Um, and it was the best school locally. Um, and it's a Welsh school as well, because obviously we're living in Wales and we wanted them to have bilingual um, upbringing. So um, so anyway, this is interesting. We we got him initiated in the school and it was difficult. Like the the, the integration was super difficult because like um, he was on like the, the list to be tested for all sorts of stuff. And, and they were kind of like, you know, but and it was a bad experience. The first class he went to was a bad experience. They were like, "Does he play with other children?" I was like, "Well, I, well, I don't know. It's been COVID, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know." Um, and they were like, "You know, because we'd never had this experience with him before, because we we'd never been around other kids with him." Um, and then they were they were just really they were just it was a bad experience. But then that teacher left, and a new teacher came in, and this new teacher's kid is on the spectrum, right? And so this new teacher was like, just "Dead cool," and she like she was like, "Oh, we're doing this, that, and the other," and then. So we had this huge, there was lo- there's loads of issues. I could sit here all day talking about issues like how, you know, getting him past the gate, you know, like to go into the school. Like that, that on itself is just a ni- nightmare. But in terms I, of. I, I relate to the, the getting past the gate thing. Oh. So I used to do a bit of special needs TAing. Yeah. And I had to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. a few times. <laughs> and it, it's so okay. weird, right? Because like he, he'd walk, he'd like run up to the gate and then freak out. And we'd have a full on <laughs> meltdown. I was like, stop. dude, it's like, and it's like, oh my God. And then. 
Um, but yeah, but now, funny enough, like yesterday, I went to pick him up. Now, so he's he's expand- He's been there a year. He's in a, he's in a full time position there now, and um, he's in the, he's in a class with his actual auntie, which is cool, and he loves it. But the cool thing, there's two cool things. The first thing is that the sc- schooling had changed the way that we. So when we, you and I were in school, right? It was a sit down at a desk, and if you can't sit down at a desk, there's something wrong with you, and that's the issue. You're the issue, right? Not the establishment, but it's changed now. Schooling is um, they, uh, what the hell do they call it? It's called like um, uh, like a rotation development. So the, the it's indoor outdoor play, so the doors are always open, so they can go outside if they want to. Uh, and you're never sat at a desk doing something. You're always in small little groups doing like different tasks and play learning and and all these things. Like they did Makaton and they did yoga and they did all these kind of things, right? And I was yeah. like, holy smokes. But, and the cool thing about it is that the school have a, a catchment um, criteria. So he they did certain things with him yesterday. And then so we had a conversation. So now he they, they, they have to send him for assessment for hypermobility and um you know uh, fine motor skill issues and you know all the other stuff the lovely things that come with autism and so you know he's <clears throat> got floppy hands and he can't hold things and he gets frustrated he, do- he doesn't play with kids he plays on his own all this sort of stuff. so it's kind of like where i was terrified of that experience for him he's actually in a really good place because the teachers are looking out for those things to then say okay this is what we do in this situation you know what i mean yeah yeah so that's pretty, like, my, more holistic sort of yeah case by case kind of Exactly, and I like. Attitudes. And I think this whole new approach to schooling is is an initiative here in Wales. I don't know if it's everywhere in the UK, but it's definitely here in Wales. So I'm kind of like really blessed. Um, and so yeah, so you know, all those fears I had, you know, it's kind of helped me therapeutically because going to the school with him and helping him go in there, I'm feeling way more at ease with it, which makes me less like because I was just scared the whole time. You know, thinking back to my childhood, thinking like, oh my god, it's gonna be a nightmare, and like, you know, yeah. and this is the thing you'll you'll learn this when you have a when you have a kid it's like holding a very thin glass ball and you don't want to drop it because it could smash anyway it's so delicate you know you don't want anyone to touch this thing you know i had such a um, such bad anxiety um uh, when like family members would, would pick up uh, my kid when he was, he was a little baby i'd like i'd be crying and shaking and stuff because i'd be like so like oh my god and i was so protective because um it was it was difficult, you know. Like, you know, uh, you know, we give like personalities to shoes and stuff, and we have a bad time throwing out old clothes. Well, it's kind of like, a, a, you know, with a kid, it's, there's a huge, there's a, there's a deeper connection there, you know. Uh, especially for autistic people, as we feel things deeper, and so having other people holding was crazy. So I had this like whole like, oh no, you know, having them like go attachment, to, yeah, you know, anxiously attached. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly, and you know, but then again. But yeah, it's it's good now because he's like he loves school and um and uh, yeah, I was just like wow, and so yeah, it's definitely helped me uh, think about you know how, it's helping me as well, and I think that's a good thing. You know, there's there's therapy there, so that's awesome, man. Thanks, buddy. Well, um, I guess like could you could you give us like a couple of or may, maybe one one for each about like the the positives. And negatives about about being an autistic parent. Do you find that there's certain aspects that you struggle with, and certain aspects that you really flourish in? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll give you the negatives um, straight off the bat. The worst part is um, sensory processing, noise, mm-hmm. food textures, um, and being tapped out. Like a kid always wants to like sit on you, or or tap you, or talk to you, or <laughs> like sit on your head or something you know and it's like you get it but you're like whoa dude like i'm so centrally tapped out like i can't have anybody else touch me today or else i'm gonna flip a table you know and uh it's like the spoon theory but your kid takes all your spoons from like 9 a.m it's like <laughs> all the spoons are gone it's like <laughs> so it's kind of like you know no spoons and you have to kind of plod along i mean that's the like like noise but it's actually my my kid has like audio audio ticks so uh to, um sorry stims mm. so he does yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. he's like ah, i'm like ah like and it's so loud and so like it's like the funniest household ever so i'm sitting there with headphones on and he's like ah, I'm like ah and he's obsessed with sirens like you know uh <laughs> air raid sirens he's obsessed with air yeah, raid sirens yeah. we watch we watch countless tiktok videos of air raid sirens it's the most bizarre obsession ever but i even have to buy him one and then um so we watch these air raid sirens and he imitates air raid sirens oh my god but the so, so the noise sensitivity and the being tapped out—I mean, like by far the worst thing. Like it's just I can horrendous. 
Mm. But the good thing, and this is kind of like a weird byproduct, is um, because because obviously you have lots of anxiety and fear uh, with autism. Um, you know, you're you're kind of like fearful of certain things. Like you're like I'm fearful of um, like going anywhere on my own, right? Because I always feel kind of quite intimidated by people, or like say even down to small things. Like say you were scared of spiders, right? But with a kid, you're you're in charge and making sure that they feel safe and you're protecting them. So to take my kid anywhere, like to town or to a grocery store or to a market, you, you kind of like put on this like bulletproof vest a little bit. And you're like, yeah, man, I can, I'm so going to nail this. So you kind of have your this. your focus is on. Yeah. On because you're like, so you're protecting this kid and you know, you can protect this kid. You become like braver in a way, you know, you become somebody else, like in, in a good way. Like you, it's not masking. It's like, it's almost like overcoming certain fears they never really go away you overcome them for those those times you're with your kid and like sp- same with spiders and stuff like say spiders in the house you have to teach him like oh he's our friend and the spider's on his journey through life and we get him out and we're, we're very buddhist here so like you know and we, we kind that. of like you know i teach him all these things you know um and like bees right like i used to be so like uh, triggered by bees the noise and <laughs> yeah. and like what's flying stuff. next year yeah Oh like. my goodness. Honestly, that stuff is the worst. <laughs> but now it's kind of like I teach him like, oh, the bees are our friend. Hello, Mr. Bee. And they come and land on us. Now now I can have like bees land on me and stuff. And I'm like, wow, look how beautiful it is. And she's like, whoa, you know, like I never have those things. But it, so you learn, like kids teach you so much. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, but for autistic people, there's so much to, that you can uh, gain. If you're open to just being, you, there's so much more you can gain from that experience. That's really interesting. <laughs> My God. Um, so I guess like one of the last things that I wanted to, to, um, chat about is, you know, if, you know, people are watching this and, you know, thinking to themselves, like, even, even if they're just young, you know, they're, they're in their early twenties, mid twenties, and they're kind of like, Hmm, I don't, I don't know about this whole being a parent thing. Um, but they can they kind of have an inkling that it's something that they might want they might want to do in the future. What kind of advice would you give to those artistic people wanting to start a family? Okay, so what I did is I did the Lamar's classes, you know, like um, you know, uh, like prenatal classes. So you can go mm. and sit in and like, what do you expect at a birth? What do you expect, like? You can go to, and you can even actually have a walk around of the the um, uh, the midwifery unit in in your local hospital. That's kind of cool. Those things are super important because what you want to do is you want to know what the experience is like, and that's what I wanted. So I signed myself up for the Lamar's classes straight away. Um, also, there's actually extra help. So if you're if you're on the spectrum and you're uh, you know you have family planning uh, uh, in mind, then you can actually have um, there's like a course you can go on that prepares you uh, for uh, through your through your local health board, you can just say to them, you say to the midwives and the care team, you say, look, I've got additional needs and what are the helps available? And they just throw help at you, dude. Like, and what they do is they come to the house and you go through, uh, like we had this, th- that, so yeah, this is something really important actually. We had a like a, a trainer come to the house and she would sit down with us every week and we'd have like a course book and we'd go through it and it'd be like, if you're in this situation, this is what happens. And it was really good because it was like, you know, like but just like simple things kind like, of yeah you know like do this <laughs> yeah and like and it's it was it was algorithmic you know and but but it was logical so like rather than like one thing was like if your kid is screaming you know don't scream back it's not going to get you anywhere sit down and give them a hug or or tell them or validate their feelings or you know and it's just like oh shoot you know and the stuff that you think like holy smokes like but but the stuff that people would kind of come to eventually because they uh, you know, the pe- not everybody's on the autism spectrum, right? So it's not just black and white sure. for people. So people would go all yeah. around the way and they'd find out that. But if, but for us, it's like, you know, I'd be like, okay, this kid's broken. Take it back, you know? Like, <laughs> but, um, but they teach you all these <laughs> things. And that was really cool. And all that is available. You just have to ask for it. Um, and the other thing I would do is I would spend time around people with children, um, mm-hmm. but don't look at how the parents are dealing with it because every parent is different. Look at how the children react to life. Because that really gives you, because a, a lot of people do this mistake. They they look at people parenting and, and try and see what they would be like as parents. But you're looking at somebody else's life, you know, that that's, yeah. To, you yeah. know, or somebody else as a person. You never look at them and think, how do they eat their dinner? You know what I mean? I suppose as well, like if you have, for example, if you were around at someone's 
house, um, you know, you're in their house, you're in the vicinity, and it's not always going to be the same if it was them, their kid, and you come in to kind of hang around, hang around with them. It's not not the same as just daily life, kind of. Exactly. Mm. It's yeah. It's not. It's not just the like you know the bedtime routine or whatever. It's it's completely different, right? But the, sure. the thing is, you want to look at. You want to see how kids react to things. And kids are so funny. They're just like little tiny people who know nothing about the world so they just rely on you for everything they just need to know and and that's cool because you get to tell them honest truths and you know you shout on them from some things but like but it, it's good because it, it, it prepares you that prepares you because that's the stuff that people don't tell you you know like i think the hardest thing about parenting them the hardest part or the portion of it is the initial like you know um you've had a you've had a kid and you go home and then, and now what? You know, like <laughs> then you know, you're, you're responsible for this, yeah, this little tiny delicate thing. human creature. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. So the best way, yeah. So we, like I said, you know, the whole prepping thing. Uh, we bought like a, a prep machine so that we can make bottles exactly, precisely, at any time of day. Um, we uh, we made sure we had everything we needed so that there was never an ambiguity of like, oh, we don't have this thing, and the baby cries. You know what I mean? Um, uh, my son actually had a severe uh, reflux, um, which sounds just like acid oh, okay. reflux. Yeah, an acid reflux. Yeah, and it was oh, just absolutely up. horrendous. I mean, I never felt uh, you know anything like it for for a kid. Like uh, apparently, it's like a it's like a heart attack for a kid. Like that's what it feels like. Mm, and mm. he's just like screaming in pain and we acid had, like, burning. You trachea. Yeah, we had to and... bounce him up and down the whole time. And yeah, uh, and we had, he, he was admitted to hospital at eight weeks old and stuff like that. Like just oh, crazy stuff. Like it was just yeah, it was absolutely crazy. But, you know, we learned loads from that. Um, but, it, but, you know, even if he didn't have acid reflux, it, it would still be a, that, that's like the, the most difficult part because you're, you're adapting to a, a new type. You know, you've got a new person in the house. You know how, you know how it is when like, guests stay up at your house and you're like, you kind of get the ick because like the inside your space, it's like some random dude crawling, crawling into your bed, right? That's what it feels like when you have a guest staying in your house, right? It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I used to feel really weird when guests, like my friends, used to sleep over my house. Like when I when I was growing up, it was like it was weird. I just wanted to go home. <laughs> but like, it's my time know, to be alone, chill. Yeah, exactly. Like it's that kind of comfort zone. So you kind of have to adapt to having this little thing, and you want it there in your comfort zone because it's part of you, right? But you have to kind of adapt to like, oh shoot, you know how do we do it? But it's fun, you know. It's it, it's the hardest part, but it's fun. And this is the thing I'd say: anything that's worth having should be hard work. You know, we don't we don't just get up every day and somebody gives us money. We work hard for our money. We you know we don't just get up every day and like life just happens. You know, we work hard at life, and so everything is is hard work, and and those things reward, are rewarding. You know, nobody does nobody puts hard work in something and gets nothing out. You know, what that's that's not how um, thermodynamics works. You know, what I mean, like it's, anyway, you, you get it. I'm I'm really surprised about the amount of um, support that's available. I mean, insane, insane yeah. amount. It, it fills me with a lot of confidence. As I'll definitely say that, and I, I know that there are some different options that you can go for as far as education, which is, I think, the main thing for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I know. I mean, I have a little. I like to call her my little prodigy. It's one of my mom's friends' daughter, um, who's who's on the autistic spectrum, and I I help them sort of go through, um, sort of pick up different traits to to tell the occupational therapist, you know, about the autism yeah, yeah. and um and I guess sort of do do some stuff to kind of work on on the confidence, you know, cuz kids kids at that age are around about 10 years old. They, yeah, 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 they tend to struggle with the um the environments and stuff and especially at school like you know if they've had like a long break and then they come back and so I kind of I I do have experience with it. I think it's just it's um it's just a, it's a very very small but big leap at the same time. Like you can you can have a child if you want to, and um, <laughs> but looking after a child it's another thing. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> um, you know the 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 thing about the, the get back to the support stuff though is that you have a health visitors as well, right? And the health visitors are there like you can phone them anytime. And even the midwives, you can phone them anytime and be like, dude, I need some help. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And like the health visitors, uh, they come and visit you every like week. You know, you just had a baby. Wow. They don't just be like, here's your baby. See you later. They're like, okay, yeah. we'll see you in a few days. Like, 
you know, don't well, that's worry. That's what I thought. That's what I thought when I, when I was thinking about it. So it's why I was, you know, so keen to chat to you about it. Cause it's, um, yeah, no, they, 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 you know, and that, and, and so the mid and the midwife team and the, 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 um, uh, the, uh, what did I just say? What did I call them? Uh, the, uh, oh, the, the health visitors, they know that you, they know that you have issues because you, you put it down and you're kind of like your, your pregnancy plan thing. And so they, they always, they love like, how are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, do you yeah. need any help? And then, and then, so I was like, oh yeah. And that's how I kind of got into that course, the, the post course about like ch- children learning and, and all that kind of stuff and how do you deal with home life and things. Um, I think I still have the book somewhere, man. Like it's amazing. Like they just, and it was so good. And they'd check in and they'd be like, can you complete the sheet by next week? I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. Which I never did because like, you know, you'd like zombied out for the first kind of like <laughs> couple of months when you have a kid. You're like, ah, oh, what day is it? Like, um, you wake up at uh, 4 a.m. Oh, just <laughs> constant. And like a kid wants to wake up every couple of hours for, for feeding when, it, when they're yeah, really yeah. super tiny. And it's just, I mean, it doesn't last forever. I mean, it's tiny, you know, it's like a blip mm-hmm. in the in the reality of life. It's like this little tiny, like, um, moment that you go, oh, God, I remember being up all night <laughs> constantly for like a month. And you're like, oh, yeah. It feels like forever at the time. But then you look back, geez, that was four years ago, man. You know, and, and like, it's just, it, it's like, oh, wow, that didn't last long, really, did it? And it's, it's, it's cool. It's a good thing. So, so it's been really, 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 really great to talk to you again, Dan. And um, I can tell you that it has filled me with, with quite a bit of confidence, actually, about becoming an awesome parent, you know, having all this you know the possibility of support in place and different options and as far as education i think it's 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 definitely something worth considering very um seriously <laughs> like it's not yeah. just a you know just a oh, I want to be a parent it's um i think <laughs> yeah, it's that's the decisions there i like that there's all that prep in place and yeah i mean Obviously, there are going to be challenges and different challenges depending on whether they're autistic or not. But yeah, it's um, re- really, really interesting to uh, to hear your thoughts on it. Cool. Bro. So before we sort of end the episode, do you have any links that you want want me to share about? Yeah, I mean, like if you just like it's super simple. If you want to follow me on any social media platform, and I mean, literally mean anyone. It's just at the Aspie world. So T H E A S P I E W O R L D with the at symbol obviously before it. Um, and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Vero, everything. Um, all of them. And yeah, all of them, every single one. <laughs> Get on it, man. And we upload videos. Oh, and we also got a podcast and blog. So yeah, I upload yes, videos every single day. Of course, yeah. So yeah, we do. We do a ton of stuff and I love it. And if you like this episode, make sure to go over to the SB World podcast. Because um, we we did an episode a little while ago, didn't we? A yeah. short one, twenty minutes. Um, um, that really one fun. is that one's only available for my public, uh, sorry, my private community at the moment. But there is an edited version of it coming out in the next month or so. Cool. Very cool, very cool. So, thank you very much for everyone listening in. Uh, we're going to go through a bit of a song of the day, Dan. What is your song of the day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, was a, that was an awful that was an awful <laughs> introduction to the segment um but basically uh what's your song and uh why do you like it cool there you go <laughs> the song is called charlie be quiet by charlie puth and uh or charlie puth and it's only just come out but the reason i like it is because um charlie puth definitely has adhd and i'd say he's on the spectrum as well because he has perfect pitch a uh, very interesting guy he's a youtuber as well but he mm. uh, did the song called Charlie Be Quiet. And it's kind of like a story about people telling him to be quiet and you have to lower the tone, which I find very relatable because I'm very loud and the ADHD makes me go like, blah, 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 all day. So <laughs> it's good. It's a good song. And it's great. It's a great song. He's a great songwriter. Cool. Very nice. I will add that to the playlist, which is always down at the bottom of the description. Uh, Charlie Be Quiet by Charlie Poof. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, pr- pronunciation is important. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, Charlie Puth. But I said, I kept saying Charlie Puth, and then I heard him say Charlie Puth, and I was like, oh man, that's how you say your name. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure he knows how to say his own name, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Like, Dang it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Well, um, of course, if you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more, make sure to, if you're on a podcasting service, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, 
make sure to give us a rating. Very much appreciated. Preferably the five star variety, <laughs> um, if you could be so kind. It's and, like Uber. Um, we give you a ride. You give us yeah, a five star, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five star and some some cold hard cash. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Lightweight. <laughs> oh man. I love it. So yeah, um, if you want to catch up on the podcast, make sure to check out the YouTube channel, Thomas Henley. Uh links always in the description. Podcasts available on pretty much all podcast streaming services and if you want to keep up to date with my life how things are going the work that i'm doing head over to instagram or pretty much any social media platforms but primarily instagram which is at thomas henley uk and yeah uh, i hope you guys are doing well and um it's been really 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 great to talk to you dan and yeah, i hope you guys man. Have a very, very lovely day. See you later, folks. Peace. Peace, peace. <laughs> <laughs>